I was handed a picture of a window that appeared in a Harry Potter movie and asked if I could build it. It would be inside a house and hung on the wall to replicate the look and feel of a real window. You know me, this looked like fun, so I said yes. I started with some half inch MDF boards. I wanted this to be as light as possible since I knew it would be hanging on the wall like a shadow box. So using my trick for perfect arches, I drilled two holes in each end of a piece of scrap wood and used it as a pivot to trace out my arches. Putting a brad in one hole and extending the lead of my pencil to fit through the other hole, I drew out my arch. I wanted to use as much of the board as possible, so when I saw there would be a gap between the two arches, I used a straight edge to find the center of the board, then measured from the center to the corner, divided by two, then re-drilled my pivot stick holes to correct the gap. Once happy that I was using as much of the board as possible, I cut out each arch. These are the heaviest boards in the entire project, so I would be using them as top and bottom foundations for this project. When laying out my back plate between the arches, I realized that I would need another piece to make it the entire distance across the back. Yes, I am making this up as I go along. I purchased a 2x4 and thought I would save a lot of money just making the window panes out of the pine and other scrap pieces that I had lying around in the garage. So I started by cutting the 2x4 at the 4 foot mark to allow me to save wood. I set my table saw at 1 inch and began by ripping the 2x4 into strips, cutting both 4 foot pieces. This gave me my 6 strips. To make sure all my pieces were perfectly flush with one another, I clamped them together and cut each end at its smallest board. I still thought they were a little bit too wide, so I took each board back to the table saw and ripped them in half one more time. With each piece now an inch wide and a half inch thick, I placed a rabbit in each piece. What I am hoping for here is that the plexiglass will sit in each rabbit and with the slight angle of each piece to make the arch curve, that will be enough to bend in the plexiglass and pop them and hold them in place. After looking at all the pane strips, I thought I would need a little more strength from the back two pieces, so I went back and cut two more that would be on the right and left sides. These were without rabbits. I then took the two non-rabbited pieces and screwed them into place. These would give me support while I added the other rabbited panes. I took two pieces with rabbits and placed them over the thicker pieces so I would have my plexiglass grooves. I guessed at a size for the front pane and decided that 8.5 inches would work fine. I made my marks on top and bottom. In order to do this, you need to find the center of the arch, then measure out 4 inches in each direction from there. I drilled out some pilot holes with countersinks so the tops of my screws would be below the surface of the MDF. I also placed pilot holes in all of the pine pieces to keep them from cracking when I screwed them into position. I placed glue on each end before screwing them into place. This will give them an extra seal. I found the center of the bottom of each arch and measured outward to find the width of each backplate. I made my marks and then ran each board across the table saw. This is quarter inch hardboard. If you want your box to be even lighter, you could actually use birch wood here. That would work just as well. I made sure everything looked good here before I moved on and that the seam was perfectly in the center. At this point, I decided that I wanted the backplate to lay inside the frame, kind of like a shadow box backplate does. So I cut strips to go around the inside of the frame so the backplate could lay on those and be flush with the very back of the arch. I simply glued them into position using a scrap piece of the backplate to ensure that I was flush, and then once clamped into position, I simply stapled them into place. Knowing that I would be placing shelves inside the window, I gave the backplate a little more support by placing a crossbar in the center of the back. This was also a little bit lower so the backplate could rest on the crossbar and use it as support as well. Then I finished adding the rest of the lip on the sides. I measured and cut my backplate ends so they would now lay down into the lip of the back. From here I would tack them into position. Remember not to tack them into the crossbar. I will show you later why I did not do that. The weather was a little cold and I was expecting rain the next day so I put on my first coat of paint. This would give me extra time to let it cure. 
Okay, this is a first. I received this tool as a Christmas present and I thought this would be the perfect time to use it and see how it does. Since each frame of each window pane is slightly angled, getting the perfect measurement for each would be difficult. Well, if this tool worked, then it would save me some time. I simply push the tool into the position I am measuring and then transfer the shape onto the board I was cutting. And then I cut it out with a bandsaw. You can use a jigsaw here, but it did make the process a lot easy and a lot faster. The piece I am cutting is actually plastic. I had just finished doing the trim around my doors on the outside of my house and this was leftover scrap so I thought I would use it in this project. I love this stuff and it's easy to cut and it can be glued and take screws easy. So seeing that this worked great I just continued with the rest of the panes simply repeating the exact same process for each. So starting at the bottom I started cutting the crossbars for each window square using the same composite plastic scrap pieces. I took a straight edge and held it on each piece and then drew the lines so I would have the exact angle of each piece. When cutting, I would cut a little bit larger and then trim it down to make sure each piece was perfectly snug. I continued with this process until all the frames were cut out. Remember that the person requesting this window wanted shelves inside and in order to be able to access them, I would need to make a door so she could get inside the window. I will hide it in plain sight and make it as part of the window panes. So the far right will not be completed during this process and we will circle back to that later. I took the window back outside and painted the crossbars of each window pane. In order to create the round curved upper and lower foundations of the window, I thought I would just stack two pieces of MDF on top of each other and then route a curved bevel onto them. So I placed a piece of MDF on top of the window and traced out the arch. Then I added an inch and a half to the arch to allow it to stick out beyond the original arch. And then I simply just cut it out. The two stacked on top of each other would only need to be even in the front. The lower one needs a lip so I could tie it into the top of the window. So the lower of the two boards needs to be wider than the top piece. So it was important that I made just the top piece fit. Okay, so just like in every video, you get to see that I am not a pro and I have to learn things the hard way. Well, when joining these two pieces together, I put a bead of glue down then I grabbed a nail and I thought I would just nail these two pieces together and allow the glue to dry. Well, if you have ever tried to nail into MDF, well, it's not that easy. I really don't suck with a hammer and nail, but this step certainly made me look like an amateur. So I went back to the tried and true method and just screwed them together. Instead of stacking a bunch of wood together to extend the top of the window, I thought that just using a piece of quarter inch hardboard would do just fine. Anything thicker probably would not make the bend, so I cut a strip at 6 inches. This would also give me the area for the wording of honeydukes. I measured the piece to fit, cut it on the miter saw, and then pre-drilled holes to help me attach the piece to the face of the window. Bending the piece and screwing it into position proves to be difficult, so find someone to assist you during this step. I did not attempt to hide the screw heads and I just figured I would cover them when I painted the top. So to give the top some support and something to tie into, I measured and cut three pieces of 2x4 to go around the bend. This would also allow me something to attach my round curve to. For the centerpiece, I would place screws from the bottom up to hold the block into position, so I drilled pilot holes downward to ensure I would be hitting the block once I drilled upward with the screws. I also used wood glue. For the other two blocks, I would break out my pocket jig and place some holes in them. This would allow me to screw and glue the blocks into place. Once the blocks were secure, I placed a little bit of glue between the block and the strip and held them together with a clamp until they were dry. Then I took my round arch, laid it on top, and placed marks where I, I needed to drill the pilot holes. For my lower arch curve, I did not have enough left over to make a continuous arch so I just made each side and joined them together. This also saved me wood. At this point, I needed to start making my window pane door. So I took a strip and I cut it at an angle on one of the sides. 
This would allow it to be flush with the paint strip that was already in place. So these cuts are slightly angled. When cutting the glass groove, I had to slightly angle the blade again. This would allow the panes to stay angled and the glass be in alignment with the other pieces of glass. For this part of the window, I used Select Pine. It is a little stronger than trying to cut it out of 2x4s. And then I slid some plexiglass in the groove and ensured it would fit. I would have to find a scrap piece of plexiglass to complete the last window pane, but that would not be a problem. I cut a few cross pieces and checked their fitting. Then I pulled the plexiglass back out and took them to the painting table and gave them all a fresh coat, front and back. I taped up the top of the window to paint the wording area. I thought that the berry paint looked a little dark, so I put down a base of flat white paint to help lighten the pink. When I sprayed the pink, I put a thinner coat to allow the white to shine through a little. Going back to my arch curves, I routed each one top and bottom to give them that smooth, curved, rounded look. Once complete, I took them out to the painting table and gave them a fresh coat. Now that the parts to the door were dry, I could assemble them. Seeing that I would have to add a piece of plexiglass to complete the door, I needed to be able to hide the division from sight. So I marked where all the cross panes would need to be, and then I marked the plexiglass at one of the cross panes so I could be able to hide the gap between the cross pane. I cut the plexiglass on the table saw at that location and marked. With everything cut to size, I pulled off the plastic protection to the plexiglass and began to assemble the door. In order to help me hold it together and everything in place, I used a bead of glue from a glue gun so it would harden quickly in the cold air and allow me to keep working. This came together nicely and I began to wonder why I did not make each window in this fashion and then just attach them all together. But that's what happens when you make it up as you go along. You discover faster and better ways of doing things in the process. So while that was drying, I took a leftover piece from the back plate and cut it in half. This would be the shelves that the requester wanted in the back of the box. I decided on 18 inch shelves across the back. Her only stipulation was that she wanted 18 inches between both shelves for a special object that she intended to place on the lower shelf. So taking the piece to the table saw and ripping it in half, I would end up with each shelf being a little less than five inches wide. More than likely, if you are making this window, you will probably bypass the making of these shelves. So I will speed through this process. With the paint dry, I attached the top round arch into the blocks that we mounted earlier. I intend to put a picture on the back of the window to make it look like you are looking inside the sweet shop. So before I put down the pictures, I need to ensure my shelves were centered and give them pilot holes through the back plate. Once you have your pilot holes, take a mechanical pencil and place them upward through the holes and make marks on your shelves. This will give your marks for your pilot holes and make attaching them once the picture is in place a whole lot easier. There are numerous ways to do this next step. That is, if you care to do it at all. For me, I simply took a picture off the internet, enlarged it, and printed it out on photo paper. The last time I talked about the program I used, I received hundreds of stupid comments on what it sounded like. So I will just skip that step and let you use whatever software enlarging program that you have. After all the pictures were printed, I took the time to attach them into one large poster. I used packing tape on the back side of each photo after I had them perfectly aligned. Eventually, I had one large photo that would fit inside the window. Earlier I said not to screw in your back plate into the crossbar. This was the reason. This is so you can slide your photo underneath the crossbar between the back plate and the crossbar. Yes, and if you're wondering, I think that far ahead when imagining how to build these projects. And yes, it doesn't always work in my favor, but this time it did. A simple bead of Elmer's glue at the very top should help hold it in place, along with the crossbar and the shelves. I don't think this is going anywhere. Now take a screw and feed it up through your shelf pilot holes. Hold down the photo and allow it to pierce through the picture. 
you only need a tiny bit protruding just until you can get your shelves aligned with their pilot holes and then you can screw it the rest of the way into the shelf holders. Because I'm a perfectionist and the gap at the bottom was bothering me, I added one more piece just to make the gap smaller. If there is anything I have a bunch of, it's scrap wood. So this only took as long as it did for the paint to dry. Going back to the ends, I needed to close the top and the bottom of the window. Just in case she did hang it up on a wall, you didn't want to be, to be able to see under it. So I took a quick measurement, drew out my arch, and then took the two pieces out to paint. Now that the scrap piece was painted and dry, I simply glued it into position to cover up the gap at the bottom of the picture. Getting close to being complete, I needed to attach the access door. I did not want to lose the tightness of the fit, so I dremeled out the hinge areas so they would be flush with the frame. Before attaching the hinges, I hit them with a quick spot of paint just to cover up the bare wood. It was now time to install the plexiglass into the panes. To ensure I had a perfect fit on each one and did not waste plexiglass with bad cuts, I used cardboard first and cut it to fit. Then I used that as a template to cut my plexiglass. With a slight bend, it simply popped into position. If any of the pieces were a little loose once in position, I used a glue gun on the inside to hold them tightly up against the frames. Those little glue guns come in handy when you're building projects like these. Now that the paint was dry on the top and the bottom pieces, I attached them. I simply aligned them even with the back of the box and then stapled them into position. I then continued on installing the last remaining pieces of the plexiglass. So with the door attached, I wanted to place little latches that would hold the door closed. I drilled my pilot holes. You can't afford anything splitting in these final steps, so don't skip your pilot holes. I screwed one in the top and one in the bottom. I did screw one in the center, but after seeing it after the job was complete, I removed it because I thought it was an eyesore. To attach the bottom plate, you will need to lay the window on its back. Everything should be flush here, as this is supposed to be hung on a wall. So, I used the ground to align the bottom plate and just tacked it into position. The next step took me back to the computer, where I found the wording online that I would use to cut out the lettering for the top of the window. I used a vinyl cutter to cut out the letters, but you can draw and paint these by hand and get the same results. You might even get away with using Sharpies. But I thought, I have a vinyl cutter, so why not use it? Knowing I was almost complete, I was very pleased with how much this project weighed. It is very light, and I believe I will have no issues hanging it on the wall if I find the studs. Taking a look at this window from the back side will remind you of how hollow this project is. So the last step of this project is to attach the mounting brackets for the wall. I measured down 2 inches on each side and placed my brackets into position. From there, I traced out where the keyhole needed to be. I then took a plunge router and just routed out no more than an eighth of an inch deep in each of the keyhole positions. And that was it. I called this one complete. I think it turned out great. It was both fun and challenging to make, but I think on a level of 1 to 10, it's about a 5. Really not that difficult. Just like all the projects, just time consuming. Don't expect to knock this one out in one weekend. This is a multiple day project especially if you have a day job. As always, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button and I would love to hear your comments below.